And, um, you know, the people started spreading it that I said that women and men have to go 50-50. And, you know, like, the men started praising me and the women started attacking me. And I want to make this very fucking clear, right? I'm going to make two things clear. First thing first, I never said that women and men have to go 50-50. I never said you have to go 50-50. Then you have bitches cursing me out. Like, it's like, oh, yeah, bitch, you get cheated. And you go 50-50 in your home. Blah, blah, blah. All right, like, I'm, I want to make this very fucking clear. Me and Austin, we don't go 50-50. We bought a house and we went half and half on our Atlanta home. Um, we got two properties that we bought together, two investment properties. And I bought my home in Jersey myself. And he bought a condo in Miami himself. So, you know, like, um, we're part of the 1%, uh, and we're very fortunate that, um, we're very fortunate that we're very successful and everything. However, there was a point in life that I wasn't successful. You know what I'm saying? I grew up with regular parents. And let me tell you something. My mom, she did not work until I was six years old. She was a fucking princess, laid up, feet done in the Chinese store every single other day, whatever the fuck, doing good. We even had one of them big ass, uh, TV screens. My dad lost everything, bitch. When I tell you my dad lost everything, my dad lost everything. And um, then my dad became a cab driver. My dad became a cab driver and my mom had to get a job. And my question to you is, right, when my dad lost everything and became a cab driver and he couldn't pay the, the whole, the rent with the bills and everything, was my mom supposed to, was she supposed to leave him? Was she supposed to leave leave him? Um, one thing about it is, even though my dad lost everything and he, and he had to start cab driving, guess what? I was never in a fucking shelter. There was not one time that the lights went out. There was not one time that we didn't have cable. The only time that we didn't have cable was when my mom and dad separated when I was like 13. But the point is, right, um, my dad was paying the rent and my mom was helping on the bills. Like, that's what partnership is uh about and then um then they started saving money they started saving money because they wanted to buy uh real estate upstate you know foreclosure homes and rented and everything then my parents separated but you know he took his money and she kept her money so that's one thing that's that's reality that's life and another thing is right i'm gonna put you in, in a situation like let's say if you are a young couple you're 21 you're 20 or you or you're or 22 or whatever. Um, yeah, a young couple, you with your man. You and your man want to have your own crib, but your man is in college. He about to be a doctor. He about to be an accountant. Um, but y'all want your own place. But you know that he can't afford the whole thing. Are you going to leave your, your man that's about to become a, law, uh, a lawyer, a doctor, an accountant, because he cannot pay, because y'all want your own crib, but he can pay the whole thing? Like, that's what I was trying to acquire. Sometimes when you love somebody... When you love somebody and you have to work with a partnership, um, there's nothing wrong with that. And I, I be wanting because you know I'm, I'm big promotion. Don't fuck a broke nigga. But sometimes y'all gotta realize that it's like, not everything is, is social media. You know what I'm saying? Social media sometimes be fake and they will promote something to you that is not real. If you got a young nigga and y'all both young, y'all both 20, 21, 22, y'all both in school and everything, you know that y'all want to get y'all want to get your own crib, you know he can't afford the whole shit. Why not do partnership? Why not he can't pay the rent and you pay the bills? Y'all both young, y'all about to y'all y'all owe man money to Sally Mae. Y'all about to become somebody in a couple of years. In a couple of years, he, yeah, he could buy, buy a home. He pay everything, but what? You going to leave a good nigga because the internet is telling you that it's like, no, you, you need, uh-uh, you, because he, he got to pay the whole thing. He can't pay the whole thing. He in school. So that's what I be trying to say. And um, a lot of y'all be like, oh, yeah, but you and Offset. Don't worry about me, me and Offset. I ain't trying to be fucking, I ain't trying to sound crazy, but it's like, we don't have those type of issues. Like it's like we we've been made it. We we have we have enough money. But in a bad situation or in a it, we was if I was younger and everything and I fall in love with somebody that can't like that can't like do everything I want. I why not help until they get back on their feet and then they could treat me like a fucking prin princess. And so they treat me like a queen. I don't gotta work. I don't gotta pay a bill. I don't gotta I don't got gotta buy nothing. Like and that's just reality of, of life. That's just reality in, in the hood. That's just reality everywhere. So that's what I was trying to say. A lot of you bitches got it mixed up. A lot of you bitches were trying to call me a pick a pick me and everything. But y'all have to remember that I came from um 
I came from regular people, regular parents, um, that I was younger. I, I, I dated broke niggas. I dated very fucking rich niggas. I have dated, um, I have dated men that they just straight up wanted to take care of me and just want me to have a baby with them. And I used to be like, no, cause I want to have my own shit. What happened? What happened when the next young bitch come around? What happened when the next bad bitch, the next fucking badass stripper come around and you decide to kick me out of the crib and I'll have a baby and you, you a D boy and everything. And it's just like, I have no, what happened when you go to jail? What happened with that? Like I, I had to think about stuff like that and everything. And also I want to, I want to tell you like a little story about, um, one of my aunts. I have an aunt. She's a fucking bad ass bitch. Hair to her ass. Body like a fucking Coke bottle. Uh, skin like fucking porcelain. Just a beautiful bitch. When she walk in the fucking room, bitch, tuck your nigga. But guess what? She didn't even want your nigga. <laughs> Facts. That's my auntie, bitch. And, um, you know, her man has a lot of money. Have a lot of money. A lot, lots and lots of money. And she always been taken care of. She never had a job, nothing. But she is a real right bitch. Like she's real right. She's real right. She and everything. And I remember when 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 I was growing up and like she used to have issues with her man. She always used to tell she always used to tell her nieces, and I'm one of the nieces, she always used to cry. She used to be like, always have your own shit. Always have your own shit. Always have your own shit. Because when these niggas start acting up, when these men start fucking acting up and shit. And, and, and you want to leave, you have something to, to leave from. You got, you got somewhere to go. You got some money to spend for yourself. So I always want to make sure that, that women know that because sometimes being put up is great, but it's like, like, it's like sometimes if you put up and a nigga's giving you ten, twenty thousand dollars to, you know, go shopping and everything, make sure you save a little five thousand ten thousand put it on the side because you know it, there's always going to be a, a girl there's always going to be bitches and sometimes when a man feel like they're taking care of you and everything three years four years later you they, you start feeling like a burden to them you start feeling like a burden to them you start getting older you know you know women when they get like 28 29 they sex drive go lower there's a no there's always a new young bitch i mean you've seen that tyler perry movie charles charles your lunch is ready Charles, yeah, that's real life shit. So always have your own shit, just in case for a cold day. Niggas wanna act up. You got a little something, something. When a man give you a shopping spree money, oh, he give you a little ten, fifteen thousand. Even even if even if your man give you a little five thousand, put a little thousand on the side. God forbid something goes, you get a little condo for yourself. Bye, motherfucker. All right, so uh. <laughs> I'm only telling y'all this shit because I, I grew up with real women. I grew up with real men. I grew up with real shit. I grew up with real situation. Um, I'm very lucky and very fortunate that, um, you know, my life turned out a little bit different. But like I said, I'm part of the 1%. And, you know, like, I, I the reality for me is, is different than reality that everybody else. But I always want to, like, give, you know, give my young girls... Somebody say, I love Tokyo. Hey. Give my women, give my, my niggas, give everybody advice and everything. And I love, and I love, um, I love to have debates and everything. I love to have debates. I wish I could, I wish I could do li uh, lives with somebody that I could debate, that I could have a, a respectable debate because there's one, there's one bitch, her curls was too tight. She was trying me on TikTok. Like, bitch, who the fuck is you? What you, what you talking about? So sometimes I wish I could have, like, uh, friendly debates with somebody on live about certain topics. About certain topics. But I don't know. I don't trust y'all too much. Not Tubi in the comments. Tubi's here. <laughs> on the beach acting bad, we on Tubi. You don't never ever want to lose me. You don't never ever want to lose me. Me. He don't ever ever wanna lose me. Bitch can never be me like that. Bitch can never be me like. Bitch can never be me like that. Bitch can never be me. He's like your phone while he's facing my coochie. He like it when I make it juicy. Yeah I'm bad. Yeah I'm ugly. Put on ass. Leave a shoe print. He let me in on even no groupies. In Miami I'm strutting my two piece. On the beach I've been bad we on two be. He don't ever ever wanna lose me. All right, I'm out because I have to do something. Ooh, I'm hot. Hot as fuck. Yeah, uh, I'm hot as fuck. 
God damn it, motherfucks. Um, yeah, make sure y'all, yeah, yeah, check out also some of my music. You know, I got a lot of projects out right now. You know, I got um y'all know I got enough out. Y'all know I got that remix with Flo Millie and Scissor out. Mm -hmm. Uh this week coming out, I got a song with Shakira coming out. It's a lot going on, so make sure you check that out. Make sure you put a little money in my pocket. I need some change. I need some change. Give me some money. I'm so poor. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I still got, um, like, like what is still going around? I see a lot. I feel, I feel like a lot of girls like that song. I feel like you motherfuckers started playing me with uh, first, but now I know y'all see it everywhere. Them bitches, bitches singing that song. Like, like, like what? Yeah, I love that. Thank you so much. I love Love you girls, I love the, the that, that was meant for the bad bitches. If you are, you know what I'm saying? That was meant for the bad bitches. So I'm really, really thankful for. I'm really, really, I'm really thankful for my comeback. I think I'm doing pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm doing pretty, pretty good. And um, yeah, I'm thankful. I'm grateful. Thank you so much, Barty Gang. And yeah, fuck yeah. Uh, have a good day. Um, hope you're husband. I mean, I didn't. I'm fine. <laughs>